This is SARS-CoV-2. It belongs to the family of coronaviruses named for the crown-like spikes on their surfaces. We've done a lot of documentaries on several topics over the last few years, but this is one project that we're very, very excited about. As the coronavirus was ravaging the world and the World Health Organization upgraded it to a pandemic, soon after we got an index case in Lagos, I got a brainwave and decided immediately to assemble my film crew. We bounced ideas off of each other and decided to tell a Lagos story about the effects of the pandemic on city life in Lagos. First thing we did was to map out Lagos into different zones using the density of population and the demographics. Once we put that in place, the next thing was for us to decide a shoot schedule. So at this point, I decided not to write a script until we shoot for a couple of weeks. Though I had a visual image in my head and the plan was to replicate it. So off we go into the streets of Lagos, starting from Lekki, to Victoria Island, to the mainland, Apapa, Ikeja, Sulere, Isheri, Yaba, Ebutemeta, Makoko, Isaleko, Point of No Return in Badagri, <laughs> Mushi, Isolo, Agege, Bariga, Aja, Bagada, Ojo, Festak, Alaba, and Banana Island. We drove around all these areas in Lagos looking for unique shots that will tell a story. Our approach was to use a storytelling technique so that each shot will have a hidden story behind it. This lockdown period, I've also kind of reflected on things that would have been happening if I were to be in school. The challenges grew on a daily basis. In certain areas, we were almost attacked. Once people saw cameras, they became paranoid and aggressive. Many times I had to quell them by inducing them financially. And in some cases, I had to explain to them that we were out here to tell their story. A lot of them had pent up anger and emotions against the government. And they felt that this was an opportunity for them to vent. Paddy, paddy government. You give somebody to a leader to say share to people. He will finish them with his family. Them, them will sit down together. They finish it. Hunger. So to eat, since even Gary, I drank Gary once. I didn't go out to buy pens. I was in Bengal only for 40 days. 40 days. That's a real old one. I want to play with a friend. Just see it. It wasn't easy, especially when we had to cover government distribution of palliatives. Cameras were a no-go for them. There was because there was a lot of stuff flying around on social media about how government was using the palliatives for personal gains. Some did not want to be filmed at all. They believed that we were going to use these footages for government propaganda. Every day threw up a new challenge. The original idea was for us to explore the effects of the virus on life in Lagos. But as we progressed, it became a cliche. At the end of the day, I'll come home in my study and get on my computer, do some research on the effects of the virus on cities all over the world similar to Lagos. So it appeared as if they were oblivious to the threat of this virus lurking around them. I immediately decided to pursue the theme of the effects of social distancing on folks whom we encountered in these slums. I was amazed at the way they went about their daily lives, incognito of this deadly virus. I feared that if one carrier was to make his way into their midst, it would become catastrophic. I realized that these folks were divinely protected. The consensus among them was that this virus was an abrodian. <laughs> Abrodian is a slang that's used by Nigerians to describe those living abroad.
to some of these folks, the virus was a disease that affected the rich, which I found hilarious. I mean, I had to be doubling as a filmmaker and the coronavirus awareness agent, always impressing upon them that the virus was real and they had to be extremely careful. So we shot for two straight weeks non-stop. And after multiple hours of content review, I started to write the script. By this time, I had a clear picture in my head what I wanted to portray in the film. Scripting took two days away from our shoot schedule. However, we returned to the streets shortly after. So to make sure we got a balance in our documentary, I had to pursue our original theme of the effects of the virus on the city and the effects of social distancing in these slums of Lagos. While we were doing this, we decided to get different perspectives of all the stakeholders in the disease containment efforts of the government in the city of Lagos. So what we have now is a kaleidoscopic view of the effects of the silent enemy known as COVID-19 on the fabric of Lagos City from the perspectives of residents from the middle class to the lower class. We also have the perspectives of health workers, government officials, families, survivors, so without giving up so much about our documentary, what we have is the story of a city that residents say never sleeps. A city that's busting at the seams with the get rich quick attitude of residents from all over the country as Lagos is a melting pot where people come in search of the golden fleece. This movie not only depicts visually the beauty of the city, it also shows the reality of poverty in the midst of abundance that makes people say, if you can't make it in Lagos, <laughs> you're not going to make it anywhere else. You know if you're wise for Lagos, you know if you're wise for anywhere else. Do you understand? Watch out for the premiere on many other digital platforms. We'll keep you posted as time goes on. Peace. Yeah, no, I should, should.